it's a brand new week. It's Monday, but we are in the same book of Exodus. I wonder how long it'll take us to get through this. We're not going verse by verse, please. Impossible. We are going paragraph by paragraph, sometimes a whole chapter. But your assignment for tomorrow is, let me just look here, Exodus 17, 8 through 15. So we're gonna do today Exodus 17, one through seven, and I'm gonna read it. I, I wanna read scripture today to you. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin. That has nothing to do with sin. It might be linked, the experts say, to Sinai, S-I-N-A-I. This is desert of sin. Traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. How did the Lord command their movement? Remember, the pillar of fire at night, the pillar of cloud during the day. So they weren't on their own. When you belong to God, you don't move on your own. You move as God directs you. Oh, God, help us to believe that. You don't buy a house. You don't change jobs. You don't switch churches. Hopefully, you don't do anything except that God is directing you. Don't you think he knows better than you and me? I have a very limited IQ. I would think he knows better than me. Have you come to that place yet? Ah, uh, I see you grew up possibly in a church that didn't believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit that God still guides his people. You think it's just do's and don'ts and doctrine and moral commands. It is that, but it's much more. Just like parents give counsel to their children, God wants to guide us. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and they said, give us water to drink. By the way, isn't it something how nonsensical we can get? They come to a place led by God. There's no water. So you would think by now they would know how powerful he is, how loving he is, like, Red Sea opened like 10 plagues, like bitter waters turned to sweet. I mean, when would they get to the place where they would say, it's not comfortable here with no water, but God must be up to something. No, no they're not there yet. So they say to Moses, like, Moses, give us water. If there's no water there, what is Moses, a human faucet? How would he get water? But see, we get childlike, don't we? we get pampered and we whine and we often take it out on leadership. When you're in the flesh, you have an anti-authority attitude that comes over you. That can be toward um, the laws of the land, a school teacher, a police officer, anybody, the, a pastor, anybody, a, someone holding political office, don't tell me what to do. And they were like that with Moses. So now let's just talk about that for a second. There is a thing called spiritual abuse where pastors take it way too much on themselves in, in terms of helping their uh, members of their church where they become like gods to them and they have to rule everything. I just heard yesterday, this is the truth, just heard a guy from another country, he started to date a girl in a country he was visiting and then he let his pastor know, you know, I knew her for months and months, and we decided we're going to like go steady, you know. The pastor got licked. What? You didn't ask me? I mean, he's a grown man. Why would he have to ask his pastor who he can go out with? Like, give it a rest, pastor. Sure, if he comes for guidance, uh, uh, the person is a Christian, so there's nothing wrong there. They weren't, weren't living immorally. But so that's spiritual abuse. Uh, back in the 80s, 90s, there was discipleship movement. You could not buy a refrigerator unless you checked with your discipler. I mean, that's weird. That's nuts. I'm buying a refrigerator whenever my wife and I need to buy a refrigerator. And I don't need anyone to check with me. You want to get a fridge? Go. So we got to be careful of that. But at the same time, there's disrespect of authority. And this is what we're reading about. Moses had been put over them by God. You know the verse that says in the New Testament, obey them that are over you in the Lord. So if someone tells you, now look, 
here's our plan. I'm your pastor. We're going to go out later tonight and we're going to rob that convenience store. So come on, I'm your pastor. Let's do this. No, pastor, I don't care who you are. That violates God's word. I don't do anything that violates God's word. What does it mean then? Obey them that are over you in the Lord. So as shepherds shepherd the sheep and guide them, there's an authority that they have from God, never superseding the word of God, never superseding God's leading of our lives. But if everyone's their own king, how would the body of Christ get anything accomplished? See the authority that Paul used in the New Testament. I'm sending Timothy to you. He's what you need. No, we got we to vote about this. No, no, you don't need to vote. I'm sending Timothy. Trust me. This is how churches split. The pastor is entrusted. The leadership is entrusted. So they got to vote and squabble. I knew of one church 25 years ago. They split over what color the carpet would be in the ladies' room. No, no, you can't make it up. You can't make this stuff up. Too many cooks spoil the broth. So why do you quarrel with me, Moses said? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us uh, and, and our children and livestock die of thirst? Oh, Moses, you are the man to put up with that. Why are you, Moses, taking us out of Egypt? Because you want to kill us. We're going to die of thirst and our kids and our livestock. Thanks a lot, Moses. You know, oh, my goodness. If there had been a G building, for those of us in Brooklyn who know about Kings County, if there had been a G building in, in, in the Sinai Peninsula there, Moses would have been like, please, I'm calling 411. Take me away from these people. But he endured. Mm. What patience. They cried out. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. There you go. There's a great meeting. Let's have a stoning meeting and stone Moses because he hasn't done anything for us. Do you see how bad the flesh can get? That's in all of us, not talking down to anyone. We can get crazy. And when we're frustrated, we many times take it out on the person nearest us or someone in authority. The Lord said, answered Moses, go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah. It's odd the commentators say that one place would have two names. And what those two names mean is uh, testing God and arguing with God's leadership. Testing and arguing. Because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, they tested him saying, is the Lord really among us? See, that must have hurt God deeply. Like, God, are you really with us? Because we're at a spot and there's no water. Wait, wait a minute. What's the history of God with you? I don't care. That's yesterday. I'm talking today. Are you with us? You better prove you're with us. 1 Corinthians 10, read it today beside Exodus. 1 Corinthians 10, where Paul goes back to these tests and these behavior patterns of Israel and says, let's not be like they were and test the Lord and grumble. No grumbling today. No grumbling today. God is with us. Has he proved good to you? Come on, tell me your story. Has he been good? Yes. He's going to continue to be good. So let's not grumble. I got something to replace grumbling. Let's just praise the Lord today, for God is good. Amen. Amen.